Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church of Crockett, Texas. I'm also delighted to welcome those of you who are watching on our Facebook live stream and listening on our KIVY broadcast. Thank you all for worshiping with us today. Today is, of course, a very special Sunday at First United Methodist and at churches all around the world, for that matter, as we celebrate and give thanks to God for those saints that He has placed in our lives to bless us, to teach us about the faith. We'll be celebrating that a little bit later in the service, and uh, we'll be having a message about that as well. But we're very blessed to have you join us in worship today, and I hope that if you haven't already taken a moment to do so, please sign the registration pad and let us know of your presence. If you're watching on Facebook, we hope you'll sign in. Uh, wish us a good morning or something. Let us know that you're uh, watching on Facebook. I'd like to remind you about the exciting development of our new pictorial directory. We are in the midst of signing persons up for pictures. The dates of picture taking will be December 7th and the 8th. You can sign up on your own if you'd like online, or you can call Shannon at the church office or get in touch with Ellen Brooks over here, and they'll make sure that uh, you know exactly how to sign in, and they can, in fact, help you sign in. I'd also like to remind you about the Carter Blood Drive going on in the Fellowship Hall today between 12 noon and 4 p.m. Giving the gift of life can make a great difference in someone's life, and I do hope you'll consider giving today between 12 and 4 in the Fellowship Hall. I'd also like to remind you that our annual charge conference will be taking place this Tuesday right here in this sanctuary at 6 p.m. We'll be voting on our next year's leadership and our budget. All members of the church are welcome. Let us now begin with our call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Oh God, you sing us a love song every time we gather. Every time the bread is broken. Every time the cup is blessed. Oh God, sing to us again. Let our lives blossom in your love until the whole world. Now let me invite you to stand as you're able for our hymn for all the saints, number 711 in your hymn book.
please be seated. And let me invite you to turn to page 12 in your hymn book. We will join together in a service of word and table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not for the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And I want to direct your attention to the names of those in your bulletin, persons who have passed excuse me, persons who are homebound, living in nursing home situations, persons who are in hospitalized, persons who are ill from one um, situation or another. I invite you to pay attention to those in your devotions and lift them up in prayer for God's empowering healing. And I invite you to join me now as we as one congregation go before the Lord in prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we come to you with thankful hearts this morning, ready to worship and give you honor. We're grateful, Father, for the privilege of meeting together as your people. It always encourages us and strengthens us as we sing and pray together and, and as we hear the message from your word. It's our prayer, Lord, that you would challenge us to walk in closer step with your will for our lives. Father, our souls are hungry to hear more about your plan and purpose for us individually and as a church. We want and need our lives to be a journey of faithfulness and purity. We want our souls to be a holy place for your spirit to dwell. And so we ask you, Lord, to cleanse and Remold us in your image. And Father, we need you not only here in this building, but in our everyday lives, because you call us to be the church every day. In every moment, we're still the church in our homes, when we're doing our business, in the classroom, in our places of work. And we want to portray that spirit of Christ wherever we are. So anoint us for that holy task, Father. Lord, as you look down inside each of us, we know that you see all the things that no one else can, the hidden areas of our lives. And so as we reach out to you, we pray for forgiveness for the ways we failed you. We pray also, Lord God, for encouragement that we might be about the business of being the church we would also lift up those father to god on this day whose whose hearts are heavy with sadness we pray for their comfort as they grieve the loss of holy one their, their loved ones we pray father for their physical healing and restoration for those with sickness for those who are facing serious challenges to their health. We ask your blessing on those who are hospitalized, those who are recuperating from surgery. And we thank you, Lord, that you're always present with us when we need you. We ask that you'd grant us wisdom and anoint us to be instruments of your love to reach out to those who are struggling with our health or loss of loved ones. 
Father, we pray all of these things in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will the ushers please come forward so we may present to God his tithes and our gifts. <laughs> Let us pray. God our Heavenly Father, we are mindful that true worship of you involves more than singing praises and praying together and hearing your word, but it also involves sacrificing ourselves to you, giving you our very best in gratitude for all you do for us. So receive these offerings, Lord God, that they may be a blessing for your kingdom, bearing fruit in love for you. In Jesus' name, amen. This morning I invite you to remain standing as you're able. We'll sing together Hymn of Promise, number 707 in your hymnal.
be seated. stand is you're able for the reading today's scripture from Matthew chapter 5 verses 1 to 12. Now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of, their right, because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Would you join me in a word of prayer, please? God, our Heavenly Father, hide me behind the cross of Christ that our Savior's love and mercy and grace may flow through my words and into our souls that our lives may be transformed for your purpose alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a blessed time of year this is for us. What one word comes to mind when I mention the month of November? That's right, Thanksgiving. Thank you for not saying turkey and dressing. (laughs) Yes, November is a month of Thanksgiving, and I can think of few better ways to start things off than to be thanking God for the souls he has placed in our midst to bless our lives with, to plow that line of faith before us, to give us a path to follow. We are truly fortunate as a church because out of God's goodness, generations of saints before us have shared their love for God with you and I. They provided you and I with a valuable glimpse of what it means to live and serve in God's kingdom. So today, at First United Methodist, we celebrate All Saints Day. It's a day to remember and celebrate those members who have passed on, although their presence is still heavily felt in our lives. So with these thoughts in mind, I was led to a passage of scripture that Hudson so eloquently read. Thank you, Hudson that gives us of one of the most eloquent descriptions of what it means to be a saint. So I want you to imagine going with me now to a hillside, probably near the town of Tabga on the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus is teaching. His teaching begins with a list of blessings that followers of Christ have come to refer to as the Beatitudes. These Beatitudes offer you and I his church one of the best pictures of the saintly life. So I'd like us this morning to consider a few of these Beatitudes to see how we're doing following in the footsteps of those saints who've gone before us. First of all, from the looks of it, these Beatitudes describe saints as persons who live their lives trusting nothing more than they trust God. Jesus said, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now don't misunderstand, Jesus is not praising the virtues of poverty. He's pointing us to a deepened understanding and awareness of our creator as our ultimate source of security. Now in theory and principle, that's something you and I can easily agree upon and recognize. But in actual practice, the question becomes, is our love of money, entertainment, property, and possessions a higher priority than our spirituality is for us? Well, you can answer that question for yourself based on what you devote your time to during the seven days of the week. Now, some folks today think that if we have enough of those worldly things, we're going to have happiness and security. And so they strive most of their lives for that which is worldly and physical. But real saints are those who have learned the fallacy of this mindset the hard way. People who have experienced unemployment, hurricanes, or devastating illnesses understand that this world offers us no real security. They understand that the God-shaped hole 
in our heart can only be satisfied by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' words from verse 3 of Matthew 5 remind us that our greatest focus and attention should be our sense of spiritual closeness to God. And you know, the, the closer we draw to him, the more we are able to taste him in our lives, the more we realize we need him and more of him. That's why a person who senses their own impoverished spirit is constantly hungering for a closer walk. As a result, saints strive to grow spiritually because they're constantly reminded of the brokenness of their souls. They're always thirsty for more. Saints prioritize spending time in fellowship with other followers of Christ because they know Christ gives us the church to strengthen our walk with him. That's why saints are persons whose faith remains strong despite moments or seasons of discouragement and sorrow. There is a stability about them that isn't rocked and shaken when things go bad. Saints have a strong and reliable support system. I'm reminded of a story about a young pastor who told us about the most devastating event of his life, the death of his mother. She was a beautiful person, this pastor writes, because of her deep faith in God and her commitment to her family. She never complained about her pain or her life being cut short at the age of 49. Throughout her suffering, his mother would say, I thank God for my family and my life. Even though she was diagnosed with terminal cancer, his mother radiated the joy that comes from placing her total trust in God. She knew where her future lies. And so each morning, this pastor's father would say to his mom, this is the day the Lord has made. And she'd always courageously answer, let us rejoice and be glad in it. That's saint-like faith, when we're able to trust in God's providence over the empty and temporal presence and promises of this world, especially when we're fighting cancer. Mm. But there's a second characteristic of saints, which Christ calls us to live up to. Saints are also persons who submit their will to the will of God. They regularly and willingly humble themselves to the authority of God's word. No matter what their own feelings suggest, God's word has priority. That's what Jesus means when he says in verse 5, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Let's be sure not to confuse meekness with a sense of false humility. In the original Greek, the word meek means tamed or broken. A wild horse, for example, is, is of no use to anyone, but a meek or a gentle horse, well, that can carry children and pull heavy loads. Meekness is a matter of submission to God's will, but submission is something many of us aren't very good at. For many, life is one long battle for control. First, with our parents, then maybe with our teachers, then with our employers, and even with ourselves. That's the humbling effect of a bad habit. But true saints come to discover that we have only one hope, and that is to trust the Lord enough to surrender to God's control. We have to submit to him, allowing his word to have absolute authority over our lives. When we're able to do that, we can rest assured, God will take care of us. Saints understand this, trusting in God and submitting to his will. But there's one more thought I'd like to share from Jesus' Beatitudes. Jesus knew that the day would come when his disciples would be persecuted for believing in him. In his final beatitude, Jesus tried to help them understand that the Christian life is sometimes very difficult. 
In verse 10, he says, Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. All through the years, saints have suffered because of their Christian convictions. They took unpopular stands and they remained strong in their faith. They refused to accept the world's stable standards as good. And we see that happening today across the world as Christians are martyred. As disciples of Jesus are ridiculed for their firm beliefs. And as pastors take unpopular stands, remaining faithful in their walk. But Jesus says, when persecution happens, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. All through the ages, there have been saints who have suffered because of their Christian convictions. They didn't waver in the face of a challenge. These persons are examples for us. They offer us a word of hope. They endured and so can we. I've known a few saints in my time. They may not have been perfect people, but they fit these three criteria, trusting and submitting and standing firm. They blessed my life, and they blessed all who knew them. And in a few moments, I'll be sharing the names of 15 saints dear to First United Methodist. They walked these halls, they attended Sunday school, they participated in many of our traditions and worshiped and sang hymns from the same pews that you are sitting in now. They served this church in many capacities, and they set an example for you and I to help us see and experience what faith and devotion to Christ looks like. I'm reminded of a great old song written in 1893 by James Black that beautifully reflects on the earthly labor and ultimate destination of those great saints who've gone on before us. You may be most familiar with a portion of verse 3 that goes like this. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Today we give our Lord thanks for the faith shared by the saints before us. Their work on earth is done and it's because of them we are part of this fellowship. That's what makes these saints of God more than just a memory. They're a living presence. As the writer of Hebrews reminds us, we're literally surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. So let me invite you to pull out your bulletin insert and join with me in this All Saints Litany because it's time to call the roll. We'll begin with a responsive reading and in a few moments, as I read each name of the saints who have gone on to the reward, a chime will sound and a candle will be lit. Then when we're done, we'll thank God for their living presence and our memories of them. Everlasting God, this day revives in us so many memories of our loved ones. What happiness we shared when they walked among us. What joy when loving and being loved we lived our lives together. Their memory is a blessing forever. Months or years may have passed and still we feel near to them. Our hearts yearn for them. Though the bitter grief has softened, a duller pain abides. For the place where once they stood is empty now. The links of life are broken, but the links of love and longing cannot break. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. And we remember as well the members who but yesterday were part of our congregation and community. To all who cared for us and labored for all people, we pay tribute. May we prove worthy of carrying on the tradition of our faith, for now the task is ours. Their souls are bound up in ours forever. We give thanks that they now live and reign with you as a great crowd of witnesses. They surround us with their blessings and offer you hymns of praise and thanksgiving. They are alive forevermore. Amen. Will our acolytes please come forward?
And now for the reading of the roll. I invite you to stand, please. Bernice Easterly. Sue Hawhey. Ann Hayden. Susan Cheryl Driscoll Bass. Bessie Hooks Hodges. Richard Gensel. Dorothy Kinley. Mary Walker. Patsy Edmiston. James Cordell. Shelley and Aidan McDaniel. Lindsay Brim. Virginia Scherer. Maybell Hall. And now, let me invite each of you to spend a few moments in silent meditation for anyone beyond our local church whom you may have lost this year, a saint who remains very near and dear to your heart. During this brief moment of time, I encourage you to name them in your heart. And after a few moments, a chime will sound again. Let us join together. We thank God for your living presence and our memories of you. Please be seated. Following the service, I'd like to invite a member from each family to come forward. Our worship chair, Sarah, will come forward and, and uh, give each family a candle to take home in memory of your loved one. As followers of Christ, we belong to a very special body known as the Communion of Saints. We're a body of believers that stretches all across the world and over the courses of thousands of years. And today, we're blessed to celebrate this sweet moment of communion in the midst of that great cloud of witnesses at a communion table prepared by our Lord. So join with me now on page 13 of your hymnal as we call on the Lord to consecrate these elements. The Lord be with you, also with you. We lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice. In union with Jesus Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I would invite the ushers to come forward at this time as we prepare to distribute the communion. You'll be invited forward row by row by our ushers to receive the elements of the Lord's Supper. The choir will come first, receiving the elements, and then go to the chancel rail and receive the symbol of Christ's blood from the cup of redemption. If you would like to receive communion from one of our sealed communion cups as a safety precaution, they're at the front in one of the baskets for you to pick up, and there is one in the back also. Don't forget to, sir, <clears throat> to come forward and stay as long as you like. When our Savior came forward and lifted his bread up for all, he broke it and he told his disciples, this is my body which is broken for you. And he held up the cup and told his disciples, this is my blood which is shed for you.
God, our Heavenly Father, with these gifts that you have blessed us with, the elements of your precious Son's body and blood, we come before you humbly knowing that we have done nothing to deserve such grace and mercy. We thank and praise you for your kindness and your love that is unfailing. And we ask, Lord God, that as we leave this place in a few moments, that we will carry with us the empowering presence of your Holy Spirit to live as the saints who have lived before us with a mighty faith, sure and certain to lift our banners high for Jesus Christ every day of the week. We give you thanks for making this possible, Lord God for making us a chosen people, a holy people, all for you. So we give you praise and thanksgiving. In the precious name of Jesus, our Savior, amen. This morning we close our service of worship with an invitation to anyone present who would like to profess their faith in Jesus Christ and unite with our church either by profession of faith or transfer of membership. You're welcome to come and join our church as we stand together and sing our closing hymn, Faith of Our Fathers, number 71 in your hymn book. Let's stand. 710, 710 excuse me, 710 in our hymn book. Miss Print. service ends, we invite one of your family members uh, from uh, any of the names that were mentioned to come forward and uh, Sarah if you want to come up here now um, uh, or very shortly, um, she will uh, make sure that you get one of those candles to take home for your family. And now I offer you this benediction. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all you in understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus both now and forevermore. Amen.